What is up guys, DT Ninja here to give you guys my Ruroken Hokkaido Arc Chapter 26 discussion. Yes guys, it has been a week and it's time to discuss, yes, Kenshin's Hokkaido Arc. So, uh, I have six discussion questions. Uh, there's a little bit more, but there's six main discussion questions that I want to touch on. A uh, brief description of, you know, re uh, synopsis review of the chapter. If you didn't see my review, basically the chapter revolves around a few things. First of all, you got Aran and Kanryu who are left at the house and they're talking and having a serious conversation. Kanryu is kind of like, you're like me. And Aran is denying it, but actually they are alike. They're both very smart. They're both uh, business oriented. And Kanye realizes that staying with Kenshin and his group, he's kind of undermining his own abilities. He's not being able to use his, uh, you know, talents the way he should be able to. And he says that you would be able to make money uh, if you were uh, my student. So obviously Aran says, no, never. But at the same time, it gets him thinking because it really does make sense. And, you know, he's not a fighter. He's not a sword fighter like the other guys are. He's, you know, he's just not. Uh, I see him maybe uh, handling the financial situation, maybe, you know, like uh, stuff at the dojo. You know, the plan he had in, I think it was chapter 24, he showed a plan for the dojo and how it could make money. Maybe he has, you know, some uh, strategy there he could actually employ at their own dojo. So I can see that, but I don't see him actually being a fighter. So I agree with Kanryu in that sense. And then you have in town, you have Ashitaro and Aran, the, uh, and Asahi, my, my mistake, Asahi and Ashitaro. They're in town and they're buying groceries and suddenly they see those Yakuza groups, the same guys fighting each other. And then suddenly one of the guys just pulls out a gun and shoots the dude. And he, I mean, pretty much it looks like he killed him. And then this sets off a, a wave of riots. Like, people go nuts. They just start, uh, you know, going into the police station. I think it's the government office. And they just start taking things. They're just, they're just going nuts. They're demanding things. And it's just complete pandemonium. The breakdown of public safety and law and order. Just like in Chapter 9 of the Kinkaku Heki member said uh, this would happen. So, yeah. So, that's the other thing that happens. And then, of course, you have at the very end the Kinkaku Heki member Ono fighting uh, and getting ready to face off against Sunosuke. So, though, that's just a little... Uh, you know, kind of synopsis review of what happened in the chapter, but there's a lot of things that I want to discuss. So, first thing, was the mention of Aoshi in this chapter? Because Aoshi is mentioned. Uh, you have uh, Honda, one of the members who is in town. He he notices the guy who, who shot the gun and he's like, let, he's like, yes, let uh, you riot to your heart's content. It's like he's the one that is passing out these guns to people and he's the one responsible, you know, for doing this. So you can just see he's very happy and he's just kind of maniacal. And then he goes back to, to meet, you know, his leader, Shimonji. And he's like, you know, every, the, the town is in chaos. Good, good job, good work. And then they mention... Uh, Shimonji's like, is there anybody else besides Kanryu that Kenshin may, uh, you know, be acquainted with? And they mention Aoshi's name, Aoshi Shinomori, because you guys know the, the you know, they, they fought. That's where they first met and that's where they had their first showdown. So why did he mention Aoshi? Is it just because it's next to Kanryu or could it be a hint that maybe Aoshi is the next, uh, you know, group member of Kenshin that's going to come to Hokkaido. Now, he's not part of the group that we've seen the Warriors gathering. However, Kenshin did request him, and Okina said he's going to send him as soon as he's done with his mission. So, is it possible that he's going to uh, show up soon? I, I, I would really 
think I'd like to think so. I, I, I hope so. That's the third time they mentioned Aoshi's name. Uh, yeah, so that's really interesting. Um, now, will he be the next person of Kenshin's group to face a Kenkaku Heki member? Not Saito or Kenshin. Because we know they both face Byakuya, and Saito's probably, Saito's group is going to face another Kinkaku Heki member. However, in Chapter 8, uh, in Volume 2, Byakuya mentions the first mention of the warriors that he knows of Japan. And in this chapter, we see the big book. We see the book with the kanji for Ken, which is sword. So, in this chapter we learn that there's a huge book right well in chapter eight byakuya uh basically kenshin is like how do you know so much about us and he's like i know about all of the warriors uh of japan and he mentions sunosuke first now of course we know saito was also mentioned as well because he fought him and defeated him and he also fights kenshin but when he mentions Sonosuke first, that gets me thinking, okay, is this actually, like, telling us that he's going to be fighting someone of the Kinkaku Heki first? And of course we know he's going to fight Ono in the next chapter, so it's already set up where they're going to face off. And that would be the first of these that he mentions that would face off against a Kinkaku Heki member. And look who's next. So you have Sunosuke there, and then look who's next, Aoshi Shinomori. So, does that mean that Aoshi Shinomori is going to be the next member of Kenshin's group that faces a Kinkaku Heki member? That would be awesome. Now, I kind of noticed this while I was doing my review, and I kind of just came up with it on the fly, but I thought about it more, and it really would be interesting if this is kind of like foreshadowing, not just of Byakuya, but of, of Watsuki and his clever writing. That would be interesting if that's the case, because you know Sunosuke is going to fight uh, the Kinkaku Heki member uh, in the next chapter. So if that's the case, that would mean Aoshi would be next. And then after that, you have uh, Seijiro Hiko, and then Enishi. So, uh, and then of course, the last one they mentioned was actually someone who's already dead, Shishio, but then look who's in the shadow, that is Ashitaro. So, that gets me thinking that maybe this could be, uh, you know, a hint or foreshadowing uh, on the part of the author. So that would be very interesting. Uh, but what do you guys think? That would be awesome if Aoshi shows up. We know he's out on a mission. It's kind of covert. It's a uh, secret. Uh, Okina couldn't explain it all because there's uh, like a scandal or something in his family. So yeah, and of course Misao's on her way uh, to meet Aoshi as well. So Misao and Aoshi coming to Hokkaido is going to happen. They're both going to come, but when? When are they coming? And do you think that, uh, you know, Aoshi's going to be the next one to uh, face Kenkaku Heki member? Uh, that would be awesome. Okay, uh, in this chapter, we see a huge riot. I mentioned at the very beginning, the dude shoots the gun. It has the Gato symbol, so we obviously think that, wait a minute, Kanryu has betrayed us. He's selling weapons too, and it's not far off. He's the, you know, the, what, what was his nickname? The Death Merchant, a merchant of death, so it makes sense. However, we find out, no, that's not the case. It was actually the Kinkaku Heki member. So my question here is, in this chapter we see a huge riot and the collapse of public safety. Like I mentioned in chapter 9, where one of the leaders of the Kinkaku Heki uh, Kabato prison uh, squad, he mentions that that's going to happen. The breakdown of public safety and law and order. And that happens in this chapter. It's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pretty crazy. Uh, my basic question here is, which stage do you think this uh, combat field experiment has reached? Okay, so you have stage one, which is going to be, uh, you know, Kinkaku Heki members, uh, you know, starting to uh, pass out the swords. That's, that's stage one, and they're going to 
have distribution channels, and that would be Kanryu, right? Kanryu passing out the swords in Otaro. That's stage one. Stage two is all the riots or the violence every day in town. And then I would call this stage three, and that is a massive riot. So normal riots, they just happen every day. But this one seems to be on another level. This is like intensified. So I would say call this stage three. Um, yes. And what are, what are they trying to accomplish here? We know that the Kenkakuheki are trying to, you know, uh, make everyone stronger and, you know, try to uh, create these warriors that are, you know, being able to defend themselves. But is it possible that this is actually uh, part of the the part where Byakuya says we've been gathering capable warriors to Kenshin. This happened back in chapter I think it was nine. I think he said this. We've been gathering capable warriors, and uh, you know you're not going to be enough, Kenshin. You're not going to be enough in Mura the Batosai, no matter how strong you are. And why I'm saying this is because think about it. If Kenshin's coming to Otaro to stop them. It's not going to be alone, right? It's going to bring other warriors there. It's like drawing a magnet. So all the warriors are coming and gathering in one place. So are the Kinkaku Heki kind of putting them in a trap, kind of? Like bringing them together to see which one is the weak one. Which one has the most, uh, you know, hatred and, you know, one to actually turn on them. You know, and that's what I'm thinking. Maybe that's possible. So, uh, let me go to Volume 3, uh, what I'm talking about here. So, this is where Byakuya says, we've been gathering capable warriors uh, to Kenshin. Now, um, he does show all the Kinkaku Heki members in the background, and this is a flashback, actually. This happens in Chapter 13, and right before that, you see Ashitaro and Kenshin talking, and he's like, never by any means draw the Mugenjin. And then you see the, the image of Makoto Shishio. So does this mean that one of those capable warriors could be Ashitaro? Ashitaro is the one they want. And going back to uh, Volume 2 in Chapter 8, uh, Byakuya mentions Ashitaro. He doesn't actually say his name, but he does mention him. So that's very interesting. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So he mentions Shishio, and he's like, there's one successor to Shishio. Or no, he says there's one successor to Kenshin, and it's Shishio. But then look in the background. It actually shows Ashitaro there and, you know, Shishio's shadow. So are they after him? Are they trying to uh, kind of bring him into a situation where he's going to have to, uh, you know, draw the Mugenjin? That is interesting to think about because would he, you know, be able to, you know, change sides? Um, it would be an interesting, uh, you know, thing if that happened. It would be very interesting for his character struggle, you know, and you would have kind of a dichotomy between, uh, you know, ideologies, Kenshin and Shishio. Now, this is going to be another discussion question here in a little bit, but this discussion question is basically for all all the characters, all Kenshin's group, are they gathering them? Are these uh, combat field experiments meant to gather their own forces to kind of weed them out? Because he already weeded out uh, Eiji. Eiji was shown that he has, you know, deep resentment for, you know, the... Uh, we've obviously seen it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. When he shows deep resentment towards... Uh, you know, the, uh, the Jupongatana. And then, of course, we know when he turns, uh, you know, that's the wrong one. Sorry about that. When he, uh, when he snaps, you know, and he goes on the battlefield and he's about to, to fire his weapon at Sojiro and, you know, the rest of them. And then, you know, he chooses his side. Byakuya says, you know, I'm still waiting for you to develop. So you can see, in a way, I think they are doing this. They are trying to strengthen, you know, the people that 
you know, are weaker, but also I think it's to bring uh, the people in that book together. It's, you know, it's kind of tracking them down and drawing them like a magnet. So that's what I'm thinking. I don't know if that's true or not, but that would be interesting uh, if true. Okay, the next thing. Do you think Ashitaro feels responsible for starting or provoking these Yakuza members? So the Yakuza at the beginning of the chapter are going back and forth, just like in chapter 23. They're kind of like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the hell out of you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I mean, this is what he says. And then he's like, you know, it's kind of like just talk. And Ashitaro uh, in chapter 23 kind of uh, says that, you know, what are you guys doing? Just putting your heads together. You're not really doing anything. Just go ahead and do it. Kill each other. It's kind of like that. He's kind of provoking them. Um, and let me show you what I'm talking about. He doesn't actually say the words kill, kill each other, but he basically is saying, why don't you fight each other instead of just say it? Uh, and that's when he kind of provokes them and, you know, they're there. And in this chapter, we hear someone in the background and he's like, go ahead and do it. Kill each other. Kill them. And I don't know if it's Ashitaro or not, but if it is, I think it is. And he thought that they were going to do it with swords and he didn't think he were going to do it at all. But the dude pulls out a gun and just fires. And so Ashitaro is like shocked. I mean, shocked. And you can see it in, I think it's like uh, page 13, when he rushes, because uh, they don't have the groceries, they rush. Asahi and Ashitaro rush to the house of Gato, and they meet Kenshin and Sano outside, and they're like freaking out. They're like, oh my god, there's a riot in town. Uh, someone pulled a gun. I mean, they're telling everything that happened. So you can just see that maybe Ashitaro feels a little guilty because he kind of egged them on before. And maybe he did this time. The guy just snapped and pulled out a gun and shot him. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but he did provoke them. He did provoke them before. And they're the same people that I showed in chapter 23. And if that's true, and he did say, you know, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and kill each other. And it happened. I mean, like, yeah, I would think he'd feel a little guilt, especially with all the riots that just happen, like, suddenly. Like, just like a wave of riots, just uh, people going nuts. So that kind of shocked Ashitaro. And I think he might feel a little responsible. I'm not saying he pulled the trigger. Obviously, he didn't. But maybe his words kind of, uh, you know, were too much this time. That's what I'm thinking. Now, I don't know if that was really Ashitaro. I think it was. But there's really no way to know. Because in the context, it could have been just someone in the background. But I think it was Ashitaro. Because he was the one who provoked them before. Okay. The next thing, do you think Iran is considering Kanryu's offer? Now, what I mean by that, Kanryu makes an offer to Iran, uh, I want to be your teacher. You should be my disciple. I could teach you uh, the business practice and you would make a lot of money. Don't you want the money so you can do whatever you want? And of course, Iran does. And then he goes on to explain that not everything, uh, you know, in life, uh, you know, not everything can be bought with money. And then he goes on to explain discrimination exists. And that's why, uh, you know, he's like, it's born when there are things that you can't buy. Discrimination is born when things that you can't buy. And that's why money exists. And then it has a flashback of Iran after... He mentions that it's his family lineage, it's hair color, and when he heard that, it's like, okay, we learned in chapter one of Ashitaro the ex Khan that uh, that uh, that Iran was actually not he was not Japanese. So you see him here with black hair. This is uh, Iran right here, right beside Ashitaro. And then in the next page, 
you can see him here, he clearly has blonde hair. And this is the flashback that he has when uh, Conryu mentions that. And he's trying to, he's thinking back to it. Oh my gosh, you know, I've been exposed to the public and now my secret's out. But also he's holding in another secret that he wants to go to America. And he's not told anyone. But even though he hasn't told anyone, Conryu, without even knowing, has already got him thinking. Oh, I can get you what you really need. So that was kind of interesting. I personally don't think Aran would accept his offer, but I think that he's he's thinking about it. You know, he's thinking about it. I don't think he would abandon Kenshin or his friends, his comrades. But it is interesting how Kanryu is kind of developing, uh, you know, something with Aran because they do relate to one another. So uh, business like and you know their way of thinking so it's very interesting um but yeah i don't think that he would go uh with um uh, with him i don't think he would become his disciple even though i think that he would be able to go to america if he uh you know were to be his disciple because he'd make money right but that's just my thinking okay the next thing um five will kenshin have to confront uh, the townspeople. So Kenshin is there, and of course, there's this Kinkaku Heki member that just knocks through the wall. Okay? Uh, Kanri is kind of gloating. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And Aran kind of defends him. He's like, no, it wasn't Kanri who sold those guns, and I'm going to tell you why. And Kanri kind of gloats, gloats. And he's like, he's jealous of my talents. And then there's this, there's like this pounding on the house. And the Kankaku Heki member blasts through the wall. And you saw this in the intro of my video. By the way, I want to uh, uh, tell uh, ChrisJP20 a huge thank you for those color scans. My friend who colors them all the time. That was an awesome intro. Uh, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. But yeah, if you guys saw the intro, you saw what I'm talking about. Where the Kinkaku Heki member blasts through the wall and tries to kill Kanryu. And it's really great because Kenshin knocks him out of the way. And then Sano punches him right in the face. So he falls back perfectly so he doesn't get hurt. Well, he did get smashed in the face. But, you know, Kenshin got... Uh, just just pushed him to the side, but, but Sano got, got a hit in, so that was pretty great. Um, but my point here is that, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, right. Afterwards, uh, Aran and uh, Kanryu, they leave. They start running away, and Sano knocks back uh, Ono's attack, the Kinkaku Heki member. Ono, oh, and he uses the Futai no Kiwami, and this is where we get the setup for the fight. Well, Kenshin is like, okay, you're going to handle this, Sano. I'm going into town with Ashitaro, and Ashitaro follows him, and of course Asahi is there as well, and they're all running in the back, and you have Sano getting ready to face off with the Kinkaku Heki member. Well, will Kenshin confront the townspeople and try to stop these riots and will there be a member of Kinkaku Heki to meet him when he does so in other words will he have to you know use force to stop these these ordinary people some of them are you know criminals and yakuza but i mean like the the riots uh riots can be very dangerous so will Kenshin have to stop them and will uh, Shimonji be there to, you know, kind of greet him, like another member of Kinkaku Heki, the leader of the Kinkaku Heki, greet Kenshin. Um, I think it's possible, but it might be Honda instead of Shimonji, I don't know, because Kenshin fought a huge battle against Byakuya, I don't think he's gonna have a huge battle, uh, quite yet, he's gonna have a little rest in this time. Um, but I do feel that Ashitaro and Asahi are going to be split up. So when they go into town, Kenshin, Asahi, Ashitaro, they're, they're three of them. So, and of course you have uh, Kanryu and Aran, but they're not going to be involved. I think the, the fighters are going to be involved. So they're going to be three people and they're going to split up trying to stop these people, these riots. And what's going to end up going to happen? I think that Ashitaro 
is going to realize, oh my God, you know, did I really, am, am, I, am I partially responsible for this? He's going to start feeling guilty because what he said, and it set off the riots, and it's very serious. And then he starts thinking, like seeing all the people, and like maybe he hears a voice, you know, in his head. See, I told you, survival the fittest. You know, if you're strong, you live. If you're weak, you die. Imagine that. Imagine Shishio's in his head and you see it in front of you, people killing each other, uh, rioting. And, you know, it's just right there. And then, of course, you got the other side of him hearing the old man, old man being Kenshin, telling him, you know, this is not the way you should do it. Uh, never draw the Mugenjin, you know, never by any means draw the Mugenjin. So you're going to get two sides, a dichotomy of ideologies, and it's going to kind of affect Ashitaro, I feel, and maybe he's going to draw the Mugenjin just out of uh, kind of desperation or fear, and it's just going to catch everybody's eye, and they're going to stop fighting and rioting. This would be very interesting because... You know, that would be a way uh, for, you know, Ashitaro to just, you know, kind of lose it. But in that moment, maybe there's actually going to be someone waiting for him, an opponent. You know, I'm not saying it's going to be a Kenkaku Heki member, but maybe a Yaminobu member. We know Yaminobu is also allied with Kenkaku Heki. Maybe Sako, and maybe uh, Sako actually... Uh, finds Asahi and tries to bring her back and you got this idea of Ashitaro trying to protect her and can he protect her with you know or will he have to uh, you know it would be like a kill or protect kind of situation and let me show you what I mean so in the first chapter of Ashitaro he does kill and he does it out of hunger right he kills he he uses that spearhead and he puts it right through the dude's jugular and kills him, right? And in that, he, he chose to kill, right? And then in the next time, he's, he's fighting the boss, uh, you know, Aran kind of steps in and protects him. So in this case, he protects Aran back. You know, he, he, he uses his sword and in this case, it's just the... It's just the, the hilt. It's not actually, it's not actually the, it's, it's just the sword. It's not actually the blade itself. So that's how, you know, the sheath itself. So there he's protecting the sheath right there. He's protecting. And then, of course, when he becomes unhinged, he kills. So you're going to get this, uh, maybe this struggle between, within Ashitaro. That would be very interesting. And again, that would be also interesting if Asahi runs into Sako or a member of Yaminobu, and that's when Ashitaro has to step in and try to rescue her, and this is where he would have to go full strength, and would he have, you know, could he uh, do it without losing himself? Could he protect her without losing himself? Uh, that's what I'm thinking here. And this goes back to him thinking that it's, it's, it's guilt that, that pushes him over the edge. Because again, he did provoke those Yakuza members. Now, it's not his fault completely, but it is something that happened. It's something they heard, and it is something that caused what happened. So I feel that would be very interesting if that were to happen. Uh, so yeah, I said a lot there, but yeah. Okay, the last thing. How strong do you think Ono really is? Ono is the member of Kinkakoheki in this chapter. So, Shimonji says, The scumbag merchant is no use to us. Get rid of him. Okay? So, Ono goes to the house. He basically breaks down the, you know, the wall and basically tries to kill him. Sano and Kenshin protect him. And then Sano protects everyone else while everyone else runs away. That's pretty much what happens. But how strong is Ono? Because he used Futai no Kiwami. So he knows the strength a little bit because he saw the, you know, the wall break. So it's very similar in a way, the power of it. 
of his battle axe is very similar to Sonosuke's Futai no Kiwami. But the fact that he used it here shows that he kind of understands a little bit of the the strength level of Ono. Now, if, obviously, he's probably holding back a little bit. But at the same time, I feel that Sonosuke probably has something up his sleeve. Now, what is it? Is he holding... Uh, a special technique that we've been wanting to see. Now, in Chapter 21, he hinted that he's going to step it up and he's going to reveal what he has learned over the last five years of traveling. So that kind of uh, gives me a hint that maybe he did learn a technique from someone or he has vastly improved the Futai no Kiwami in a way where he can use it in multiple fashions, kind of like Anji would, but... I want to see a new technique. That would be awesome. But it would be really cool if he really has improved the Futai no Kiwami as well. Or would it be a defensive technique? Would it be a defensive technique like defense? Um, I don't think so based on the way he reacted to Saito asking him that when he was in Kyoto. But uh, that would be very interesting. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think he's got a new technique? Does he have, uh, is he just improved his Futai no Kiwami? What has he got up his sleeve? Uh, I can't wait to see what it is. But yeah, um, how strong do you think Ono is? I think he's pretty strong. Um, and I like how it's kind of, they're similar uh, in strength. You know, like I said, the battle axe is very similar power-wise to the Futai no Kiwami. So it'll be very interesting to see Sonosuke's uh, new technique, if he has one. Yes. So, guys, that has been my discussion. Um, I really want to see this battle. I cannot wait. Uh, Kenshin actually is going to be on the cover this month. Uh, so look forward to that. August 4th, it's coming out soon. So yeah, look for updates on my page, DT Ninja 831 Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I can't wait. I hope that we'll get more from Saito and Nagakura's side as well. But we'll probably have to wait until the battle uh, with Sano and Ono. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one.